Hello guys, this is Terry from Genki Gaming and we're back with another One Piece Theory. First I want to give a quick shout out to uh, my friend Lucas Diamond for the awesome Tropical House style track that is in the background. If you like the music you can go sub to his channel, the link will be in the description. But moving on, you're here for the theory so let's dive right in. X Drake, the double agent. As some of you may know, if you've looked into the actual lore behind X Drake, he is a former Marine Rear Admiral. He is a son, well, he is the son of a Marine turned pirate, Diaz Barrel, former captain of the Barrel's Pirates. And as some of you know from the Dressa Rosa Do Flamingo slash Drosinante flashback, the Barrel's Pirates were trying to sell. The Ope Ope no Mi are trying to provide that to uh, the Marines. Essentially, Diaz Barrel was designed as a reconnaissance agent for the Marines. Essentially, his role was similar to Rosinante's, but different in so many ways. Basically, I feel like his crew was designed to gather devil fruits bring them to the World Government Act as if it's like a trade-off to reduce their bounties. But with that being said, since Rosinante kind of is a part of this, and I know I'm botching his name, I apologize. I'm a little sleep deprived, but other than that, we're doing great. Basically, as Don Flamingo's brother, or as Do Flamingo's brother, he made the perfect spy to spy on the, the Don Quixote family and their presence in Dressa Rosa and in other parts of the world. He's basically well designed. But let's move on here. It seems as if X Drake does not hold a grudge against Do Flamingo despite him murdering his father. And Drake openly admits that he harbors no resentment against the later. However, when a situation does call for violence, he reveals a surprisingly ruthless and bloodthirsty streak. As we uh, can remember or can see as his actions when he encountered the pacifist in Subundi Archipelago, where he's like grin, where he tries to grin and bite through the cyborg's head. And with this all in mind, him working for Kaido, uh, I'm pretty sure he defeated Scotch to a certain point, one of Kaido's main men on Kaido's, one of Kaido's favorite islands. We know that he was able to take out Caribou, who is mistakenly appearing as a revolutionary war hero. X-Strike's goal seems to be significantly different compared to uh, the other supernovas. You can even see that due to his intervention between Yuruj and the pacifist that how he just like jumped into the fray. And this action can either be interpreted as one of two things. His respect and caringness to such follow pirates or he merely did not want to draw the attention to the fact that he was secretly working with the Marines. Especially after the events of Marine Ford and how horrible the repercussions of that was for both sides, the Marines could still very well be using X-Strike without us even truly knowing it. The Marines know how threatening Kaido and Kaido's forces are in regards to the Beast Pirates. We can reference Jack alone. Jack is a Jack the Drought. That's a pretty horrifying honorific or idiom for his epithet. It basically enforce that anywhere Jack goes to do a job, it's as if a drought has hit or as if a natural disaster that could cause a drought occurred. But moving on, a little bit of more side or background knowledge. As a former high-ranking Marine, 
Drake has a deep understanding of the workings of the world government and is able to use the knowledge to protect himself from danger and predict moments of the Marines. He is also aware of both the pacifist and Vegapunk and his considerable knowledge has well, may have contributed to his enormous bounty. is quite intelligent. He is able to interrupt Killer and Yuruji's battle because he knew it would draw unwanted attention from the Marine forces. And on multiple occasions, he's demonstrated that he's had a crazy amount of physical strength. Especially what we saw with him fighting the pacifist there for the most part and then that little bit of a scene that we saw via the manga's cover story between him and Caribou to a certain degree. It just proves that he has upper end armament hockey and he was the first zone double fruit user ever introduced in this series as an ancient zone. I'll give you a little bit of extra background information. The, the idiom, red flag, it was earliest, its earliest citation was in the Oxford English Dictionary for the year 1602, and what that idiom refers to is that that time the flag was used by military forces to indicate that they were prepared for a battle. That seems most fitting for the whole stylization of x -Drake. But another early citation for it from 1777 has it as a flag of warning for a flood. It could essentially be referencing both. Who's to say that Wano won't be flooded with enemies or flooded in general? Maybe the sea will try to reclaim Wano at some point. Because I'm pretty certain that Drake is going to be fit there. And it's going to be Drake versus Zoro. But with this all in mind, that's truly a topic for another day. Once we get a little bit more of the story going into Wano. But now I just want to touch a little bit more on the double agent perspective. If Drake truly is a double agent... X-Strike is doing the best acting job I've ever seen out of any pirate or any person in the series. He's fooled his fellow supernovas. He's fooled high-ranking marine officials. He's fooled a Yonko. And if he is giving information to someone, if he's reporting back to a specific marine admiral, or if he's reporting to a revolutionary person, perhaps. I wouldn't honestly be surprised if he wasn't reporting to Dragon in some situations. Because with this whole effort of the red flag, Dragon wants a war. Kaido wants a war. The Marines aren't ready for a war. Their forces are still pretty tattered and beaten, even after the time skip. I mean, they still have powerful vice admirals like Onigumo and Momonga, but there's no new blood. And plus, Kobe's not ready for another war. If the Marines were going to truly participate in a war, we would have a true indication of that. With the exilement of Fujitora and with some of the other events going on and with Reverie basically slowly coming into the horizon, it is very possible that X Drake may be playing the field entirely. He may be playing the Marines, the revolutionaries, and even Kaido himself. Could X Drake be the king of the situation? Could he be weaving his words in such a way that he's driving Kaido further into this warlike situation where Kaido's readying his troops, his the zone users, in preparation to 
either attack another Yonko or to basically attack a marine base. So with this all in mind, X-Drake is going to play a significant role in the coming years. I say coming years because Wano could be stalled out longer than what we are expecting. Or uh, even with the events of what all's happened and what the thought process of going to Wano next. Maybe Kaido's not in Wano. Maybe Kaido and X-Drake are on another island and Wano is just a build up. To that final confirmation and to that final uh, battle per se. I've been Terry from Genki Gaming. You have yourself some wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, and evening. I appreciate your views, your subscribes, your comments, your likes. Have yourself some wonderful day now. Bye bye.